when the Confederacy seceded from the United States, the bankers once again saw the opportunity for a rich harvest of debt and offered to fund Lincoln's efforts to bring the South back into the Union at 30% interest. Lincoln remarked that he would not free the black man by enslaving the white man to the bankers and using his authority as president issued a new government currency, the greenback. This was a direct threat to the wealth and power of the central bankers who quickly responded. This is a quote from the London Times following Lincoln's issuance of the greenbacks. Quote, if this mischievous financial policy, which has its origin in North America, shall become indurated down to a fixture, then that government will furnish its own money without cost. It will pay off debts and be without debt. It will have all the money necessary to carry on its commerce. It will become prosperous without precedent in the history of the world. The brains and wealth of all countries will go to North America. That country must be destroyed, or it will destroy every monarchy on the globe. So, goaded by the private bankers, much of Europe supported the Confederacy against the Union, with the expectation... All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, and Kakwadash. I want to give double honor unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are learning this truth from. And I'd like to say peace and salutations out to the hopefully lit. <clears throat> Shalom. Like and I'm going to title this lesson America, Babylon must be destroyed. You know? Lord willing, this lesson is edifying and straight to the point. And the clip I featured was from the documentary, All Wars Are Bankers Wars. And that's true, you know, because the central bankers, you know, the elites, you know, they fund both sides of the war, you know, from World War II, you know, even to the time of when Napoleon, you know, was alive, you know, they funded both sides of the war. But they said in that particular part of the clip, you know, they said this country must be destroyed. And it's a true statement. America must be destroyed, you know. So I'm going to bring out a few scriptures again. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. I'm going to start out with the book of Psalms, chapter 137 and verse 8. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. And yes, America, you know, is known for going to other countries, you know, invading other countries, you know, stealing their resources and setting up military bases, you know. America has, you know, military bases all over the world, you know. America never stays at home, so to speak. I'm going to break out the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, and verse 11. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. And yes, those arrows and that glittering spear are the nuclear missiles that are going to take America out, you know. That's how America is going to be judged, you know, by way of the ICBM missiles, because World War Three is inevitable. You know, it's going to happen regardless if we want it to or not. You know, the war between Russia and Ukraine right now is just, you know, a build up to World War Three, because, again, one major prophecy still has to take place before that destruction can come. And, you know, that's the implementation of the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip. And I'm going to bring out the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from thine it's like you, as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a fig falling it's like you, and as a falling fig from the tree from the fig tree and yes you know that scroll you know the heavens being rolled together as a scroll you know again that's that mushroom cloud you know 
once those missiles hit because, you know, the devastation of the missiles, you know, the impact of the explosion is going to cause, you know, the mushroom clouds. And that's basically what Isaiah and John the Baptist seen. You know, this is how they describe that destruction. And then we're going to break out the book of Job. Chapter 20 and verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through the iron weapon and that bow of steel again are those missiles that are going to destroy America you know that is going to be the judgment of America to be destroyed because America is modern day Babylon Babylon the Great you know it is also a revival of And I'm going to read in chapter 17, and I'm going to read this whole chapter. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee, Slakia, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many, that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Yes, that whore that set us upon many waters is America. And, you know, those waters being, you know, many nations, you know, because America is a melting pot. You know, you have all nations of people in this land, you know. And the kings of the earth, you know, these rulers, these, you know, presidents and kings and so forth, you know. They made deals with America, you know, henceforth why certain countries such as China, you know, they get rich from America because America is the biggest consumer nation. Verse three. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. It's like, excuse me. Yes, you know, John the Baptist actually saw a woman, but that woman is also symbolic to America because America is compared to a woman, you know. Henceforth, why America is a consumer nation, because it's the biggest import export country, you know, like when those cargo ships come in from other countries to bring their goods to America, you know. Verse five. And upon her forehead was written. Mystery Babylon, the great. The mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Slakia. I'm going to reread that verse 5. And upon her head was a name written Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And yes, you know, Mystery Babylon again is America because, you know, it was a mystery at one time. No one knew. Who Babylon was, but you know, during this time that we're in, it's being revealed. You know that America is Babylon the Great, you know, the daughter of Babylon, because the mother is Great Britain, you know. Verse 6 And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And yes, he, he marveled at this woman because she was beautiful. But the angel, you know, is telling the apostle John or John the Baptist not to marvel. Verse 7, and the angel said unto me, wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath 
the seven heads and ten horns. And yes, that's going into the NATO and the EU, you know, those countries that are tied together, you know, that's the beast. Verse 7, it's like your verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the earth. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the, on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not even is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition and the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings which perceive slucky which received no Caleb as yet slucky but received but received power as kings one hour with the beast these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. And yes, you know, this is going into, you know, those other nations, because, you know, the beast, you know, the, the NATO and the EU, you know, ultimately they're going to turn on America, you know, these countries that America has alliances with, they're going to turn on her and shoot missiles, you know, because that main component, you know, that's going to be a part of the Third World War is going to be Russia, you know, Gog and Magog, you know, they're going to be the ones to ultimately take America down, you know. Ultimately, it's really going to be, you know, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, you know, because he's going to put it, you know, the spirit into these world leaders, you know, to go to war with each other. But ultimately, America is going to be wiped out. You know, Russia is going to wipe America out. And then while the other nations are going to war in the Middle East, you know, they're going to stop fighting each other to try to fight the Lord. But the Lord is going to destroy them all. You know, verse 15, and he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And yes, you know, because America has many different nations in this land. And then just to reiterate again in verse 14, you know, those which are called chosen and faithful, you know, those are the elect. Those are going to be the ones to make it out of the destruction. Verse 16, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And again, you know, these other nations that have an alliance with America, they're going to turn on her and shoot missiles on her, you know, because... America has dealt treacherously, you know, first and foremost with the nation of Israel, but, you know, has, you know, made the other nations angry as well. Verse 17, for Yahweh hath put in their hearts and their minds to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the words of of Yahweh shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth, and that is America. And I'm going to bring out the book of Revelation. I'm going to read the entire chapter, and then I'm going to close. 
This is the book of Revelation 18. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. <laughs> Like you. And yes, you know, America is going to be completely des desolate. You know, nothing is going to be left. Like, you know, the original Planet of the Apes from 1968, you know, where they showed, you know, where they're on the beach and there was, you know, remains of the Statue of Liberty. You know, it's not going to be like that. Nothing is going to be left. You know, the only thing that will be left here are desert creatures, you know. That are able to survive in that type of condition. Other than that, no man will be able to inhabit this land ever again. <laughs> Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And again, as going into, you know, these other countries, you know that sell their goods unto America. And again, one example is China, you know. A lot of products that we have here in America come from China, you know, and Taiwan and, you know, certain other places, you know. And that's how these other countries have gotten rich. Verse 4, And they heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And yes, that people being, you know, the elect, you know, because the two thirds of Israel, you know, they aren't going to return. You know, they have to be destroyed on this side to come back, you know. And, you know, the plagues, it's lucky. You know, the plagues, again, are going to be from those missiles. Verse 5, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled to fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. And yes, you know, that's pretty much, you know, the proud spirit of America, you know, because this land hasn't seen war, you know, not on the scale of, you know, World War One and Two, you know. The only war that America seen was, you know, the Civil War. That's pretty much America, you know, touching herself, you know. But other than that, America hasn't been invaded by any other country like America has did these other countries. Verse 8. Therefore shall their plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord power who judges her. And yes, it's going to be Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai that's ultimately going to judge this place. You know? Verse 9 And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas. That great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And yes, it's only going to take the Lord one hour to completely once all those missiles are shot off. And yes, you know, missiles are going to be shut off throughout the world, but the majority of them are going to destroy this land, you know. 
And that's what this verse is going into, you know, these countries that have gotten rich off of America, you know, they're going to be mourning because, you know, because America. Merchandise of gold and silver and of precious stones and precious stones. shipmasters, you know, they're going to see, you know, the smoke from America burning. Now, this isn't referring to when the cargo ships were staying at sea because they didn't want to bring anything in. You know, this is referring to when that destruction comes, you know, they're going to see the smoke because they're good. Like America is going to be burning for a long time, you know, because that fire is going to be unquenchable. So they're going to see the smoke from the burning of this land you know and that's basically what they're doing they're welling because again they won't be able to sell their goods anymore verse 19 and they came slucky and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and welling saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate and again it's reiterated three times because again that's how long it's going to take the lord to completely destroy this land one hour you know this war is going to be quick Verse 20, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Yahweh hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be no more found at all. And again, that's referring to when those missiles are shot off. It's going to shake the earth, you know, because the majority of those missiles are going to hit this land and wipe everything out. And that's pretty much how America came into power by way of violence. And it's going to be taken out. Verse 
by violence. You know, Esau or Edom. That's how he's going to be taken out. Verse 22, and the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and all they which were slain upon the earth and yes you know america you know by way of esau edom you know he did deceive the whole world and the other nations by way of sorcery you know and his witchcraft and that's basically going to be the judgment of this land you know because he came into this land and took it from the nation of Reuben and Gad, you know. He came into power by way of violence and he's going to be taken out of power by way of violence. And it's only going to take the Lord one hour to do it. So Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from. And I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Till the next time I say Shalom.